Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to continue my conversation with you about the fellow in the Old Testament named Joseph. And we've learned a few things about him. And we stopped last time when uh, the cupbearer and the uh, baker uh, were allowed out of jail and revealed their dreams to Pharaoh. And Joseph ended that by saying, remember me. Don't forget me, please. And they did. <laughs> so now we move over to Genesis chapter 41. And we find these words, beginning with the very first verse. Two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile. And in his dream, it goes on to say what he saw. So two years pass between Joseph asking the baker and the cupbearer, remember me when you get restored, when you get out of here. They promised they would, but they didn't. So two years later, we find Pharaoh having a dream, and nobody can interpret it. And finally, one day, the cupbearer spoke up, and he said this to Pharaoh. There was a young Hebrew man with us in the prison who was a slave of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams. And he told us what each of the dreams meant. And everything happened just as he predicted. So now finally, the cupbearer comes forth and says to Pharaoh, Hey, I, I, there was a guy back a few years ago who did this for me and, and just wanted to let you know about it. So here, Joseph has spent two additional years in prison. We don't know what he did. We don't know what happened. We don't know what he went through. We don't know what he talked to God about. All we know is that for two years after he hoped to get out, now the cupbearers remember me. So let's read on a little bit more. Verse 14, Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. And he was quickly brought from the prison. And after he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night, and no one here can tell me what it means. But I have heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. And Joseph replied, It is beyond my power to do this. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. Now, think about those words of Joseph here. Dreams were important in old days. They were set to believe that they could predict the future. And there are some people today who still talk about interpreting dreams. And I've, <laughs> I, I dream a lot. I don't know if you do. I dream some really crazy dreams. The worst dream or the craziest one I ever had, I was on some kind of medicine for something. And I dreamed a, a chicken came into the house with an AK-47 and started shooting up the place. That's weird. I didn't think it meant anything, but I just woke up going, whoa. That was strange. So Pharaoh has his dream. He gets Joseph out of prison. Now remember, when Joseph first got there, he got there because he deliberately incited his brothers and he talked about them. A and he told them how much better he was than they were. And that irritated him, particularly when their father showed much more favoritism to him than they, he did to the rest of the crew. But now he comes out of prison 
And he's got a different tone in his voice. He says here, instead of saying, oh, yeah, I can, I can interpret your dream. I'll tell you what it means. Yeah, I can do that. The first thing he says, it's beyond my power. He acknowledges what he can't do. I'll come back to that in a second. And then he points to who can help him do this. He says, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. So Joseph, somehow, some way, we don't know how. We don't know what brought it about. Maybe it's just spending time in a jail. And in those days, jails are much worse than what we experience today, even though ours aren't very good. Somehow, he's changed. And instead of saying, look at me, I got this nice coat. I'm going to be special. He says, I can't do this. And imagine Pharaoh's reaction when he first heard those words. Because Pharaoh was told he could do this. And boy, you didn't want to misrepresent something to Pharaoh. I imagine if the cupbearer was standing around at that point, he's probably shaking his boots thinking, oh no, why? Why did I even mention this? But Joseph goes on, he says, but God can do this. So Joseph admits what he can't do. And then at the same time, immediately after saying that, he acknowledges what God can do. In our lives, we find ourselves in similar dilemmas. Oh, we're not brought out of prison and have to interpret a dream. And, and if we get it wrong, we're in big trouble. Um, nothing like that. Though, I don't know, maybe there's something similar somewhere. But we find ourselves in positions in life where we can't do something but we know God can do it through us. And too many times in churches anyway, people will, you ask them to do something, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, don't tell me you can't do it. Tell me you need God's help to do it. That makes sense. But to put yourself down, Joseph isn't putting himself down here. He's just acknowledging the way it is. And you and I need to acknowledge how things are. I tell folks all the time when I'm visiting with them, you can't do what you can't do. And you really can't. And when things happen, we often think of, speak and think about and worry ourselves about all these things that we couldn't do anyway. That doesn't help a bit. But focusing on what God can do through you or me, that's the winning ticket. And Joseph says that, and then he proceeds to interpret the dream. Well, we'll talk about that later. But let's stay right here for just a couple more seconds. God made you. He made you with all your quirks, all of your idiosyncrasies, all of your abilities, all of your inabilities. He made you. And he wants you to do something. I don't know what it is. You'll have to ask him. But one thing's for sure. When we acknowledge that he is the giver of all, we're on the first step to being the kind of person he wants us to be. So think about that. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll say a little bit more about Joseph. But in the meantime, if you have a need or a concern, call us, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great, great day, and I'll talk to you again.